Hey what's up guys welcome to Training Reviews. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you a whole load of samples using my brand new lens which is the Sigma 24-70mm 2.8 DG DN art lens. Now I'm going to be taking all of my photos and videos using the auto mode so you can get to see the full capabilities of the lens itself when it's auto generated the photography and the videos. So I'm going to be covering a whole load of categories as you can see listed here. It's going to cover five main topics. Starting off with general photography at the lowest and the highest focal lengths from 24 to 70. I'm also going to do portrait photography at the four main focal lengths that come on this lens, which is the 24, the 35, the 50 and the 70. And I'm also going to do just general portrait photography just to give you an idea of how to take perfect pictures with this lens. I'm also going to do some low lighting and nighttime photography and videos. And then lastly, I'm going to finish off with some autofocus on the video quality as well. Now just for your reference, the clips you just saw me of holding the actual lens itself, that was some B-roll footage which I shot with my 35mm Prime. But I'm actually recording this video right now, as you can see of me, using this uh, Sigma lens. So just to give you an idea of how the video quality is, then uh, this is actually what is being recorded directly from that lens. So hopefully that gives you an idea and I'll be covering a lot more about the video later on in this video as well. Now I'm not going to be covering the full specifications of this lens. Now if you are watching this video, I presume you already know what this lens is capable of. You've done a lot of research on it and you're considering buying it. Now hopefully I will give you guys a good idea of the capabilities of this lens when you want to take a whole load of pictures and videos or whatever it may be. So you get to see a whole load of samples. Now I will time all of the different categories in the descriptions below. So if you wanted to skip directly to any of these categories then you can do that because the video might be quite long and if you do want to purchase this lens it comes over just a thousand pounds so it's not the cheapest but again it's also not the most expensive lens out there so I'll leave a link in the description of where you can purchase this on Amazon now I will leave all of the EXIF data embedded onto the pictures as well because I will be taking it on auto just so you guys can see what information is generated by the lens for the exposure the ISO the aperture and that kind of stuff and just remember I will be taking everything on auto so if you do see anything that's a bit too dark or a bit too overexposed then just remember that if you switch to manual mode on this lens then you can take better pictures than what you might see so having said all of that let's just jump straight into the samples and let me know what you guys think in the comments below right so starting off looking at some of the pictures from the 24 to 70 comparisons now I'm standing in the same spot and I just wanted to give you guys an idea of how much zoom is on this lens. So take a look at some of these pictures and see the clarity in how the zoom comes out at the 70 millimeter point. Now I'm taking this at general landscape pictures of different architectures and specifically like this photo here, I zoomed in into this branch and I can see that it comes out with this very nice portrait looking bokeh effect behind the actual branches themselves and I'm standing in the same spot. If you look at that first picture there at the top at the 24 millimeter, you can see that there's a lot that is in frame. You can tell by looking at the 24 millimeter how much zoom there is on this lens. So for me, that is an amazing job. Now, if you just go through some of the rest of these pictures to look at the different zoom levels and let me know in the comments below what you think. Now I'm gonna play the rest of the sample photos through. If at any point you want to take a closer look, then just pause the video, look at it full screen, and then continue playing until the next category.
So in these pictures, I've taken a lot of portrait pictures and I've told my friend to move back distance wise, but try to keep me at the same length in the actual view frame. So whether it's 24 millimeters or 70 millimeters, I'd like to see myself in the middle of the screen at the same position, just to see how much difference the effect is on the depth of field in the background, any changes in the contrast, in the brightness, in the exposure, even in the coloring. And as you can see from some of these pictures, obviously for the portrait photography, it comes out from my opinion, the best at the 70 millimeter because it's made for that specific purpose. But if you look at the 24 millimeter, it's actually not too bad as well. You get a little bit more of the background, but it's not as good as the depth of field with the 70. Now looking at some of these other pictures, like for example, this rock, you can definitely see more of the blur in the background on the 70 millimeter. But again, the clarity in the pictures and the sharpness that you get for each of them, I'd be happy to take some of these pictures at whichever length with this lens. This one you can see, it's a little bit more difficult to tell, but for me, if you are going to take portrait pictures, it has to be the 70, just because of that standout depth of field focus that you have on your subject. Obviously with the 24, if you wanted to have more of a clearer background, then you can equally take as good photography with that as well, especially when you're doing portrait pictures. Now here's a couple more examples to see for yourself. Now in this section, I just wanted to showcase to you some really cool pictures I've taken under portrait photography, 70 millimeter focal lens. Now there's no specific purpose of showing these other than the capabilities of how good portrait photography actually comes out using this lens. So I'm gonna let you cycle through these pictures and let me know what you think about the portrait photography ability of the Sigma 70 millimeter. Okay, moving on to nighttime photography. Now I've maxed out the aperture at 2.8 for all of these night pictures. So I just wanted to give you some clarity on actually how good and how sharp the pictures do come out under 2.8 aperture. Now, as you can see with the EXIF data at the bottom, you'll get different ISOs, different shutter speeds and that kind of stuff. But looking at some of these pictures, it's so clear the colors come out absolutely perfect as they were in real life. And cycling through some of these pictures, I can't fault any of these in not showcasing how clear and how sharp and detailed these pictures are in comparison to how it was in real life. Now, even if you take a look at a picture of myself here, you can see it's come out very clear. And if someone was taking this picture in almost near darkness with very little lighting, you can see the clarity still comes out and it does a very good job increasing the ISO way into five figures and getting the picture to be as detailed as possible. So I'm very impressed with the night photography. So have a look at a few more samples and then we'll move on to night videos.
So I've taken a video of here of some water fountains. As you can see, it's very dark in the background. The focus has been put onto the lights coming from the fountain. So that's where it's capturing most details. And as you can see, it's just coming out very clear, very smooth. And even at almost pitch darkness with no street lights around me at this point, I think it's done a very good job picturing the details of the fountains, albeit none in the background. And lastly, just some uh, street videography. Now I've just set up my camera and I'm just taking a video of the street just to show some of the cars going by, some street lights and some natural videography. And as you can see, it's very clear. So take a look at the judgment. If you was going to do any video recording at nighttime, then you'll be comfortable to know that it comes out very sharp, very detailed and very high quality. So for me, I'm very impressed with the video capabilities of this at nighttime. And last but not least, I wanted to showcase the autofocus capability. So in this clip, I'm just walking towards the camera, seeing if it can continue to pick up my focus on my face and body. I'm getting very close to the camera, it's clear. I move away. It was a very smooth transition to focus into the background. As I come back into shot, it took about half a second and it was clear. And again, walking away, it's absolutely fine. Now in this next clip, I'm just cycling between all the different Funko Pop models I have. And as you can see, going from focus of one to the next, it's very quick, it's fast, it's smooth. And the good thing I like about this lens is that the autofocus is silent as well. So you wouldn't hear any motor noise when transitioning into different subjects. So for me, that has done a great job there. And lastly, just to pan away from one plant to the other, you can see with a macro videography, it's very clear, it's smooth, and it's a very fast autofocus transition. So I'm very happy with that overall. All right, so that was the whole review, guys. Hopefully those samples were useful for your decisions in if you wanted to buy this lens or not. And I will leave a link on where you can purchase this down below. Overall, from my point of view, I think this is a great lens. It's probably one of the best lenses I've had. So no matter what type of situation you're in, if you wanted to do ultra wide recording or macro photography, then it's perfect for that at 24 millimeters. Obviously it's not the most ultra wide lens, but it does a very great job in giving you the most perfect viewport of whatever you need to capture. And if you want to do a lot of portrait photography, then I think the 70 millimeter is perfect for that. As you saw, some of the pictures were amazing. And in uh, just auto mode, it's just captured the perfect sharpness, great lighting, perfect amount of exposure and aperture as well. So I can't fault that. Now there's two things that I don't like about this lens. It doesn't have image stabilization built into the lens, but that's not a problem because most Sony full frame mirrorless cameras now have in body image stabilization. So that's absolutely fine. And the second thing is that I think this lens is very heavy. So if you're gonna do a lot of handheld work with this and you're gonna take it out, maybe you have some photo shoots to do for someone or you have your own photography business, then your, your arms might get a little bit tired because it is very heavy, especially when you're carrying it without any straps or anything like that. So just be aware, always take a tripod with you because it can start hurting after a long period of use. But if you're gonna do a lot of video recording, then put it on tripod, it's perfect for that. As you can see, I'm recording the video now using that same lens and it all depends on the purpose. So for just over a thousand pounds, I actually think if you're going to use it for both photos, photography and videos, it's the absolute bargain. If you're only buying this just for videos or only just for photography, I would maybe consider a different lens, maybe a prime lens or something that's suitable just for your purpose. Otherwise for me, for a multi-purpose lens, it's just perfect and I would definitely recommend this. So if you have any other questions, then do drop them down below. Otherwise, I hope you subscribe and I hope you like this video and I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.